Today we're talking about the most useful, most powerful artifacts in Commander. My name is King Luke. I've been playing Magic for 25 years. Built hundreds of decks, played thousands of games. I got my piece of paper right here. Let's get right into it. All this is off the dome, no edit. First up, we got Thousand Year Elixir. This is one of my favorite cards in the whole game. There's so many commanders, so many cards in the whole game, such as like Elvish Mystic, just all your mana dorks. You got commanders. Uh, Felden, Arkham Dagson, Zimon and Dina. There's so many different cards that just activate on when they enter the battlefield. Three mana. It's a pretty decent price. It's it's an eight dollar card, I think. It might be up to ten now, but super solid card. I love it. I can't get enough of them. I put it in almost every single deck I play. Um, it doesn't matter what the deck does, it just seems to always need that because a lot of creatures have that tap ability and to be able to use that with haste is amazing. Next up, we're going to go to number two. We're going to be talking about the Dalkin Orrery. This is to give all of your spells flash. It's an artifact, it costs five mana, it's fairly inexpensive. I mean, five mana is kind of expensive to get on the field, but... You now get to hold up all of your cards, all of your interaction, till your opponents are done. So, like, nobody gets a chance to react to what you're doing until right before your turn. So, if they happen to spend all their mana, or they have to interact with two of your turn's mana at once, which is very difficult to do, which makes the Dalkin Ori so strong, I want to put it everywhere just because I like flash so much it doesn't matter the colors of the deck I like being reactive to things and that is so powerful in the game of magic to know what they're doing before you do it now it has also messed me up before because crows and grip if somebody crows and grips it then you don't get that mana because you can't react to that on the split second it's it's super solid card beware of crows and grip Next up, we're going to our first equipment on the, in the list. It's going to be Skull Clamp. Skull Clamp's a super solid card. One mana to play, one mana to equip. It gives a creature plus one, negative one, so it'll give him a boost to the power, but a minus on the toughness. So you can kill any one one, and it draws you two cards when the creature dies. So, like, you can equip it to a 1-1 one, one for 1 and draw two cards. Super powerful artifact. It wants to go everywhere. I love this card. It, it has been reprinted a bunch of times, so it's pretty cheap right now. Uh, goes infinite in a couple decks if you can get that activation cost down a little bit, which is very easy in a blue and white. Um, next up, we got the Altars. Ashnod's Altar and Phyrexian Altar. Both of these cards are put in the same category because they are super good. I didn't put any mana rocks on this list, only these mana generators right here um, because they are super good. Mana rocks are a different list. I like these because they go infinite with a lot of things. I don't personally play a lot of infinites, but they give you a lot of value on your tokens and stuff like that because I play a lot of token decks Red, white, has a lot of things until the end of turn and stuff like that. So the being able to sacrifice those till end of turn creatures at the almost end of your turn for mana to put it all into a really big spell is super useful. Which is why they are on the list of most powerful. Those are probably some of the most powerful artifacts in the game of Magic the Gathering. They cause so many infinite combos. If it hits the battlefield, you want to kill it. You want to kill that thing because it's it's such a problem. Such a problem. Next up, we're going to Sensei's Divining Top. One mana artifact. It has an activated ability. You can rearrange the top three. And another activated ability where you can tap it to draw a card. And put the Sensei's Divining Top on top. It enables a lot of decks with combos. Such as like Bolus Citadel and Phyrexia. Or, uh, Aetherflux Reservoir, it can let you play your whole deck with Mystic Forge and the Urza. Um, all you need to do is lower its cost by one, which is super easy. Foundry Inspector, Urza, uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of them, I just can't name them all. Uh, what is it? Urza's Incubator, that one will do it too. Um, 
you get it down to zero, and then you can draw your whole deck if you can play the top of your library. That is super strong. If you're not even doing that, being able to rearrange the top of your library is super strong. I love when people use it because they tend to dump more mana into it than they need to. My friends tend to put way more mana investment into the Sensei's Divining Top rearrangement than they need to because they don't arrange for the next couple turns or, you know, they're, they could be spending the mana elsewhere. So that's good to see in case your, your opponents are playing it against you. But if you can play it correctly, super powerful card. Next up, we got Sword of the Animist and Bitterthorn. Both of these are equipments. Sword of the Animist costs two and two to equip. Bitterthorn costs three and two to equip, but it comes out with a germ token on it. So I really like these cards. They let you ramp your mana in non-green colors. I even use them in green decks because I love the equipment so much of being able to search up a basic land regularly. To be able to do that in multicolored decks or single colored decks is so useful, especially if you can get some attack triggers. Ishin uh, of Two Heavens is one. That one doubles the attack triggers and you would get two of those, which would be awesome because it's when you attack, not when you hit. Super awesome cards. I love them. Next up, we got Aether Flux Reservoir. Aether Flux Reservoir, I mentioned it in the Sensei's Divining Top part. When you cast a spell, you gain one life. Then you cast your second spell, you gain two life. Third spell, three life. So you exponentially gain more life each turn. It's a storm count, not like a permanent counter. So it's like first spell per turn, second spell per turn, third spell per turn. When it's the end of your turn, it restarts. But it's super easy to go exponential with that and then it has the ability to lose fit sacrifice 50 life so pay 50 life and deal 50 damage to any target super powerful ability and it has ended so many games next up sword of feast and I, I literally just have a paper here guys i'm not I'm, this is all off the top of the mind next up we got sword of the feast and famine i love this card it gives you protection for black and green, plus two, plus two. When it deals damage, your opponent discards a card, and you untap all your lands. It is so strong. When I found out this card, I tried to buy it everywhere. Nobody would sell it to me. I didn't really want to buy it online, just because I wasn't in that mindset yet. But love this card. It is so strong. It came out in the Assassin's Creed. I opened, like, five boxes. Not for myself, for, like, fans and stuff. Um, but I didn't even pull one. You can actually sign up for a giveaway. There's going to be a link in the description. Um, but super strong card. It has ended games because it gives people so much mana value on five, you, five mana and you can untap your five lands. It is so strong. I love the card. I can't get enough of them when it's on the other side of the battlefield. Oh, just be aware. I, I play a lot of green, so it, it hurts me really bad. Next up, we're going for Urza's incubator. When this enters the battlefield, you can, uh, name, uh, you remove a creature type from your hand, and then those creature types cost two less. Super solid card. It helps you so many kindred decks. If you're playing any type of uh, synergy with creature types, they it, it helps you exponentially. Lowering the mana value by two is ridiculous. You can pay one mana for this, one mana for this, one mana for this, and then people don't even know what to do. If you're playing Slivers, if you're playing Murfolk, if you're playing Elves, if you're playing Zombies, it doesn't matter. It's such a good card. It'll go solid. It's it, It'll go exponential so fast. Next up, we got the Medallions. I'm putting all these in the same category. It lowers your mana value by one. I put Urza's Incubator right before it. it lowers my your creature cost by two. This lowers all the colored spells by one. So we got one of each color, red, white, blue, green, red, or red, white, blue, green, black. Boom. Um, these have been reprinted many a times. I think they're all under five or six dollars. Super solid cards. If you do not have one, pick them all up. Like as soon as possible. And then uh, if you, the one ring is definitely the best artifact probably in the whole game. It draws you cards. It has indestructible. gives you protection from things. It doesn't give you, like, don't lose the game status, but it is really close. It can't be destroyed. You have to exile it. It eats removal guaranteed almost if they got it, and if they don't, you know they don't. Super good card. It goes in every deck. I can see why some people want it banned. I don't think it's that much of a problem right now. 
Super good card. If you don't have one, I mean, $100 is a lot of money. I think it's 80 it, If you got the money, it's worth it. I'm probably uh, got a box break for one this weekend. Um, you can sign up with the link in the description. You can get some free money. RSVP so you don't miss it. Um, some of the best honorable mentions. We got Crucible of Worlds to be able to play lands from your graveyard. Super good. It's just kind of niche. Unwinding Clock. It untaps your artifacts during your opponent's untap steps. It's super solid because gives you extra mana constantly. And that goes well with Vidalcan Orrery. I love both them cards together. I can't get enough of it. And then Isochron Scepter, combo enabler, gives you extra stuff, lets you shut down opponents with Unwinding Clock and Silence in there. It's really good. Uh, I don't use it a whole lot because it's so good. Uh, some of the best commanders for artifacts, we're going to go with Chiss. He's a red commander. We're going to go with Galazeth Prismari, such a good artifact commander. Arkham Dagson. Uh, he, he searches for artifacts, puts them on the battlefield. We got um, Joyra, the Weatherlight Captain. She adds ingenuity counters and puts in artifacts. And then we also got um, uh, Urza, the one Urza that lowers artifact abilities. I don't know which one that is. It's one the one from Brothers War. It's like a blue white one. Osgear super good too. The red white dude he sacrifices artifacts and boosts himself and makes copies of artifacts super good um thank you guys for watching if you made it this far my name's king luke uh rsvp with the link in the description unedited video right here this is something new i'm trying thanks for watching peace out